Welcome everyone to the second part of this course. In the previous part, we set up the database layer using Prisma. So if you're interested, definitely check out the previous parts, link down below. But for this part, we're focusing on the API layer. First, we'll introduce GraphQL and compare it to REST APIs, which is kind of like the traditional way to build APIs. And then we'll show how to create a GraphQL API in a Next.js app using Apollo Server 3. And we'll take a look at two approaches to building our API. The first approach is a schema first approach. And the second approach is a code first approach using Nexus, which is a GraphQL schema construction library, but we'll get to that. And then finally, we'll interact with the GraphQL API using Apollo client, but that's not it. We will see how to add pagination uh, to our API so that we don't load all data at once and we can have better performance. Now to get started, go to the GitHub repo, link down below, and make sure that you're on the part two branch. So this, since we are uh, part two, this branch shares the same starting point uh, that I'll be using. So if you wanna code along, make sure that you clone the part two branch. So to do that, just grab the link for the repository and in your terminal, just run git clone, dash b for branch, part two for the part two branch, and then the URL. And then you want to CD into this clone directory and open it inside VS Code. Before taking a look at the code, let's just run npm install. And if we open our package.json file, we will see that this is a Next.js app with Tailwind CSS installed. This is a utility first CSS framework, and we have Prisma installed. Now, the previous part, uh, we were using Prisma. 2.28, I believe. But for this part, we're using the latest release of Prisma version 3.1.1. Now, Prisma 3 had a couple of breaking changes, and one of them was related to seeding. Now, to seed your database using Prisma, you will define an object in your package.json file, and inside this, um, uh, inside this Prisma object, you will add a seed key, and then run, and then like include the seed command. So, I'm using TS node to run the file located in the Prisma directory and to run this file called c.ts. So now let's actually do that. But before doing that, we actually need to connect to a database. So if you don't know how to set up a PostgreSQL database, check out the previous parts. But in this .env.example file, I will first rename it to .env. And I will provide a link for the, database, for the database right here. Now, I'll be using a local PostgreSQL database, so I don't have to worry <laughs> about someone stealing uh, my credentials. So I just added uh, this connection string, and what I want to do is actually just say mpx prisma db push. And it should work. And it ran generate. And then what I want is to run um, Prisma DB seed. However, I already seeded my database before recording this, so I should get an error because uh, there is a unique constraint. So just run mpx Prisma DB seed and we get an error because, so like if you go to your uh, schema.prisma file, you will notice that each user has an email and this email has to be unique. So if I open up my database using Prisma Studio, I should see that I have data in my database. So I already have four links and I have one user and that's what the seeding script does. So that's what you should end up with. Now let's actually run our app. So if you just stop Prisma Studio and just say npm run dev, we will have a local development server at localhost 3000. So if we go right here to localhost 3000, we will see a list of links. Now these links are hard coded. So if you go to your index.tsx file, you will see that we have this links array and it comes from this data folder and from this file, links.ts. And this is just an array of objects where each object is a link. So, and what I'm doing is just I'm looping over it and I'm returning this awesome link component, which, uh, which takes the ID URL um, and ID uh, and a category, a title, description, image URL to display the component. And yeah, and then also we have this components folder. Uh, so it contains the awesome link 
and we have a header component that um, like we're importing in our underscore app. So it's actually, it's like this layout component right here. So this underscore app is the global app component. And so like we are wrapping our entire app uh, with just uh, this header right here. So like there, uh, so that there's uh, this logo right here. And yeah, we also have just uh, an about.tsx file. This is just um, a route. So like with Next.js, you have file-based system routing. So each file in the pages folder is automatically um, a route. So if I go to slash about, I can see hello from about, which I have right here. 